So, I've always wanted a CNC mill. Arguably, my interest in automated manufacturing in general was what got me into 3D printing in the first place, since 3D printing is sort of the same thing from a technical standpoint, just way more accessible. But I still wanted something that could machine materials and not just extrude them, even if it was only for the educational value and less so for actually opening up a job shop and running the machine 24-7 to produce parts. Essentially, it should just augment the 3D printers I already have and be able to occasionally machine a thing or two from aluminum, acrylic or wood. So I was set out to do what I had planned for a long time with the Mendel Max 3. I converted it into a CNC mill. Now, even though the Mendel Max 3 is a fairly sturdy 3D printer, it's not quite up to the task of machining materials out of the box, at least when it comes to my basic understanding of the cutting forces and resonance issues involved with milling. So my Padawan and I started replacing a few essential parts that were originally only made from relatively flimsy 1mm steel, which surely sounds like a lot and actually is the same ballpark thickness that a large part of your car's chassis is made of, but the geometry plays a huge role too in how easily a part will bend. For a lot of applications, a chunky 3D printed plastic part can actually be way stiffer than anything that's just a flat sheet of metal. So after removing the parts that made this beast a 3D printer, we grabbed some aluminum flat stock and replaced the Z and Y axis motor holders and the X axis carriage, since that's where the new tool head will go. The great thing with these open builds wheels is that you really don't have to work precisely at all when it comes to the positions of the mounting points for the wheels, since you'll adjust the pretension of the wheels anyways. We also stiffened up the print bed, since again that was simply sheet metal from the factory and didn't come with any significant stiffness. To make it less prone to twisting, we spaced out the open builds wheels a bit more, which does make the Y axis a bit shorter, but that's okay. What also helped was adding this two-story MDF top plate. The thicker bottom part was screwed to the original subbed and is going to stay there forever. And the 10mm thick top plate is essentially a waste plate that will get screwed, milled and drilled into and it's just something that is going to be replaced on a regular basis. Electronics wise we didn't change anything. The motors, drivers, control board, etc. are still the original parts, but the firmware is now running slightly slower maximum accelerations and speeds, as well as slightly higher currents for the extra weight on the X and Y axes, as well as the cutting forces themselves. So the original idea was to use this Proxon rotary tool, because it came with a nice mounting flange, has a collet chuck, and a wide range of adjustable RPMs. And it worked great for a while, using these cheapo 3mm uh, two-fluid bits. It milled happily through MDF and even aluminum with like super reduced cutting depth and feeds. Engraving in acrylic also worked beautifully, but it didn't last long. The bearings in these tools aren't great. Well, at the very least they're not made for machining like this. And after replacing the original Proxon tool with a newer one that supposedly had an extra bearing for that exact purpose, and still having it fail in almost no time, the Metal Max sat unused for quite a while. I was frustrated. After spending so much time on modifying the machine and buying two of these Proxon tools, it was almost all the way back to the start. But thanks to the internet, you now have access to an almost infinite catalog of parts, and eventually I found this 400 watt, 48 volt spindle motor with an ER11 collet. Sure, it's technically only a large-ish motor with a collet chuck on its shaft, but if it worked, I'd have a much more powerful tool, a better chuck and still pay less than buying yet another Dremel. So after getting that and a matching 48 volt power supply, the machine was back in business really quickly and it turned out that the spindle motor was actually quite solid. I can adjust the RPM by just tweaking the output voltage of the power supply but I still wanted to add something like this DC motor controller to make it a bit more elegant. Right now the surface finish can be tweaked to be, I think, fairly amazing. It definitely needs a finishing pass on any surfaces you've machined and tricks like trochoidal milling won't hurt either. Now, the converted Mendel Max isn't perfect by any means. It's still a 3D printer frame after all, never intended to be used for these heavier applications. For example, the Z-axis nut holders are still way too weak for this and will be replaced by printed versions. Also, the electronics and the Y-axis rails for the open builds wheels could use some extra protection from the chips, with 
electronics, obviously for not shorting stuff out with aluminum flakes, but the open builds wheels are also extremely prone to just picking up chips that sit on the rail and then end up rolling everything but smoothly. I also sort of want to replace the regular GT2 2M 6mm belts, which are often just called GT2, with something maybe at least a bit wider to make it stiffer. Maybe even a lead screw or a ball screw if the little Mendel Max doesn't present me with any more severe issues. Though that would probably also warrant stiffening the frame up significantly. And obviously both 3D printing and CNC machining are very heavily dependent on the software you use to prepare your jobs. and. While CNC obviously has a ton of options when it comes to high-end cam packages, the equivalent of a slicer, there's not that much great software out there that is somewhat powerful and still easy to use. Sure, Autodesk Fusion is an incredibly powerful tool, but the free as long as you're a tiny startup and the learning curve involved kept me looking for simpler options. I personally can program something like a Heidenhain CNC controller directly and use a 5-axis cam like Tebus, but neither of them apply here, obviously. What I found to be a nice middle ground was the shareware-like uh, ESTL cam, which is a fairly simple 2D or 2.5D centric cam that does just about enough for me without having to relearn the entire tool whenever I want to machine something. It also does picture engraving and 3-axis 3D milling, and while that's good to have, it's not a major selling point for me. What I wanted was just a simple visual tool, and ESTL cam is just about okay enough for this. It even creates small incompatible G-code out of the box. So yeah, that's the first part of my adventures with turning a 3D printer into a mill. While it's not perfect and was a lot of work, it has most definitely turned out better than I expected. I mean, it mills aluminum, that's a success whichever way you look at it. I'll definitely be making a few more mods in the future, but at this point, it's already an awesome little conversion, I think. If you want to try something similar, I've linked the spindle, power supply and milling bits I'm using in the description below. I hope you learned something in this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel and because YouTube is still being weird about it, remember to also click that bell next to the subscribe button or you might end up missing some videos altogether. Or if you want to support this channel with a spare dollar or two, head over to Patreon and get access to monthly Q&A hangouts and more. That's it for today, see you in the next one.